So we'll start with the stable star, Harry, St. Calvados. Um, yeah. Had a good season last year before that defeat in the Arco. Um, what, what's your plans for him? Yeah, obviously, um, you know, he, he showed huge promise, didn't he? Um, and it was, uh, you know, fabulous novice chasing career, really. I mean, obviously, you know, didn't work out in the Arco, but he's come back in one piece, and that was the main thing at the end of the day. Still only five. He's done nothing but grow and strengthen up for a break. He's done fantastically well, so it's very exciting. Surely that should bring about a few pounds anyway. So we're going to start off, I mean, really, out of 159, you know, the, the options are, are limited. So, uh, you know, the obvious race really is the, 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 the Holden Gold Cup, um, you know, Exeter on the 6th of November. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start there um, and take it from there, really. His wins came at Newbury and Warwick Flat Tracks, and there's a question mark how he might handle the challenge. Like you said, we probably didn't actually find out whether he could have because of other circumstances. What are you, what's your thoughts on that this, yeah, this time Yeah, he's such a well-balanced horse. I, in the arc, it didn't go right anyway for other circumstances, but I, I, at the end of the day, I can't see it being a problem. You know, I mean, Exeter will tell us a fair amount, won't it? You know, mm. So it's probably a good start, way to start him that way and, and find out whether he does handle undul undulations. But you know, he's such a beautifully balanced horse. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not worried about it at all. And then trip-wise, how, how do you see Yeah, trip-wise, I mean, we, we to keep him as, you know, obviously Holden's a little bit further than two, but, you know, at the end of the day, he's, I don't see any real reason to be stepping him up in a hurry. Where he's at his deadliest is sort of middle part of the race, is burning horses at other horses off, you know, with his pace and the way, way he jumps his fences so economically. So, um, look, we'll start, we'll start the Holden Gold Cup. Uh, you know, it's Andrew and Kate's horse, and they've got a fabulous horse there, and, you know, the, they, they would love him to run in the Tingle Creek and, you know, I don't see any re reason why he shouldn't, you know, and, um, you know, all being well, um, that's where we'll, uh, all roads will lead in December. You think an awful lot of this horse, don't you? Oh, listen, he's very talented, you know, um, he was lucky enough to have Vars out, obviously, before and, and lucky enough to be involved with some fabulous horses at Nicky Henderson's um, when I was involved with, you know, uh, running a satellite yard for Nicky, so, you know, he's, he's, he's of that sort of top class calibre, so, you know, um, this is exciting for sure. And Big March also had a good season over fences last term. Great when, season, when two yeah. miles and yeah. two mile four. What, what, where do you see his trip being? Two mile, two mile four. I mean, you've just hit the nail on the head. You know, I think he's a galloping two stiff two miles, or a sharp two and a half. You know, um, good ground definitely is where he's at his best. Uh, you know, the, I think really in the JLT, he ran an absolute stormer until his stamina just you know cut out, uh, especially on soft ground. So, you know, we're, we're very much keep to kind of the two mile races, the top handicaps, you know. I mean, he's going to start at a race at Kelso on the 7th of October. I think he's at 150 uh, over two. He's going to start there. There's a race at, at the Ascot race, the two mile, a big handicap chase at the end of November. I think it's the 24th of November. He'll then go there because he likes to have six weeks in between his runs. And that way we can get him very fresh because he's always best running fresh. And then, you know, later on in the season, probably something like the Grand Annual. Um, you know, he's, he's just, you know, what a horse to have! He's, 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 his, his jumping is his, his biggest asset, and um, you know I imagine that we'll end up running in a top him at some point, whether it'll be this season or next. You know, it's something we've got in mind. But anyway, we'll um, we'll take in the first half of the season, and go from there. Mm. And the Dubai Way progressed quietly and nicely last season with four wins before the. EBF final. Did yeah. anything come to light after that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Listen, listen uh, it blew his brains a little bit. The, the EBF final. He he was very much on his toes in, in the pre parade ring. We we couldn't even get him in the saddling box, and we had to saddle him in the corner of the paddock under a tree. You know, um, and that was that was uh, you know is that touch him? and go. That that is unlike him. Yeah, that is unlike him. Whether it was or not, it was just a race too far. Um, he he is a big he's a big horse and he's a big baby as well, and you know we've minded him really. We'd been quite cute about um, Adam, who you know Tucker, who, who who works for me, who who plans all the horses. You know he 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 executed a, a plan to get him well handicapped very nicely. Like, obviously the likes of Hexham and Sedgefield and Boxing Day, and then you know top weight at Warwick in a handicap where you know he was just the best horse in the race, and so he had his four wins. He'd obviously won his bumper at Foslas as well, and so you know it was no surprise really. That that, you know he was tipped up by a lot of people and he was the favorite for the EBF but you know it just it didn't go right on the day um, it was a big experience for him there was a big crowd you know it was a lot to take in and listen I don't think he ran too badly Harry was happy with him you know he what he, he pulled up he wasn't really tired he he said Harry said he was just sort of going through the motions really he was running very green you know he went the same pace in the first furlong as the last furlong so 
we were happy enough for the run, but look, he's built to go chasing. He's won an Irish point to point, and um, you know, at the end of the day, he's off the same mark, so it's not going to do him any harm in the novice handicap chase first time out in October. Another promising horse is Anamwa, who um, looked really good at Huntington's and wasn't disgraced in a good bumper at No, certainly uh, not. Uh, exactly, still, still run a big race, you know. I think it was a very good race anyway, on paper it looks that way. And, you know, and uh, at the end of the day, he's, he's a big, big, big horse. Uh, and, you know, he's done really well for a break. He's done nothing but strengthen up. And obviously his sister's, uh, you know, gone on to do amazing things this summer, winning the French Oaks and what have you. So uh, Lorenz, incredible, really, to think that uh, a half-brother, a year old, is winning a bumper at Huntington first time out. But, uh, look, he's, he's, he's a fabulous a uh, animal. And, and um, you know, he'll, he'll jump hurdles, he'll jump fences. But, you know, you couldn't roll out him running him over a maiden over a trip at some point on the flat. Yeah, um, and Vinny Lewis won some staying handicap chases um, on testing ground. He didn't quite fire in the eider though. No, he didn't. I, sort of, like, I suppose it was a race too far. I, I know it was only his fifth run, but at the end of the day, you know, what a performance he put in in the um, Sussex National. You know, he looked like he could have gone round again, but you know, with these staying chasers, you know, there's only so much you that they can take. You know, they're, they're hard races. You know, three and a, three three mile five in heavy ground is you know is a true test, isn't it? He's come back in, he's done well for a break, and uh, you know, he's squealing and bucking the house down. Uh, that's when you know he's in good form. And uh, you know, we'll just see how we go from here. He's, he's listen, off 137, he's, he's gonna have to improve a good bit to be competitive in now what he's gonna have to go into, something like a Welsh national over fences, mm -hmm. you know? Where they go, you know, we all know they go, they rock and roll and they go a good hard gallop in the Welsh National. It might not suit him, you know. So he, he does set, tend to, to to suit a real slog. Um, so I, I'm not sure where we'll go with him. But one thing is, he is a maiden still over hurdles. Uh, although he won't be able to run in the maiden, obviously, because he's one of the fences, he can still run in novices. So I th he was a good little hurdler. Um, and I think we might just start him off in a novice hurdle um, anyway, his first run back, a three mile novice hurdle, and go from there. Simply the Betzels horse you had a lot of time for last year, and he ran Trailer's some. favourite. Yeah. He ran some solid um, race overs, but he didn't win until May, so he's still a novice. That's right. For the that's whole right. Season I mean, now. what options? I mean, he's got great options, doesn't he? Still being a novice is fantastic. Another lovely horse for Andrew and Kate, Kate Brooks. You know, he, he's um, he's a he's a proper horse, and he's he's a big, strong lump of a horse. You know, and um, and I you know I I think he'll be, he'll be better over fences. Um, you know, come next season, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, he's he's still got more to do over hurdles, and actually, I want to wait another year to let him strengthen up more before he goes novice chasing. So, um, you know, off a mark of 130, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have some fun with him, handicaps and novices, and um, yeah, we're looking forward to getting him going. I mean, we're sort of scratching our heads at the moment about where we start, but. Um, you know, there's obviously the listed handicap hurdle at the beginning of um, November uh, day, which um, Andrew Brooks, uh, in his Ascot Insurance, they, they insure, sorry, they um, uh, sponsor a couple of the races there that day. So that could be an option. There's also the Greatwood. So he'll be ready to run beginning of October, whether or not we run him in a novice under a penalty. This is obviously only one one race over hurdles, mm -hmm. even though he's finished second in the Supreme Trial. Um, you know, there's the Persian War. I'm not sure we'll do that. We'll probably either go novice under a penalty or there's a 0 to 140 over two miles at Weatherby uh, mid-October. And, it, I, you know, whether or not we give him a bit more handicap experience in a 0 to 140 at Weatherby or go and run him in a novice under a penalty. But uh, that e either or would be a prep run for either the last listed handicap hurdle at Ascot uh, or the Greatwood, or even both. I mean, obviously quite... Elgin ran in both last year, yeah, didn't he? Still so race him quite highly then. I, I think he's, I think he's a proper horse, and, and he's done nothing but improve physically uh, for a break. And he's come back in. He's that much stronger and more mature. And look, to have him as a novice still for the season, and to be able to run in handicaps, it's, it's, uh, it gives him lots of options. So we should have a lot of fun with him. Um, Court liability did things quietly last year. But, um... Yeah, absolutely. Three from three for the yard. That was great. Won his bumper well. Lots of winners come out of the um, out of that. Race. Race in Fontwell. Uh, he, he went up to uh, Sedgefield and won his novice hurdle there. He then won under a penalty at Hereford, both over two and a half miles. We've always thought him as a three miler. He's slow at home, he'd give you no feel really. He's just so laid back, but you know, he does it on the track, which is the main thing. And um, we, I suppose we sort of have the opinion that you know, we feel that we'd get him potemps qualified. Um, so stay over hurdles. Absolutely, you know, it's definitely stay over hurdles. Although, Saying that, he's done so much growing um, over the last few months. He actually picked up a little suspensory sprain in January. That's why he had the second half of the season off. 
but he's all good from that. There was no damage, it was just a sprain. He's back from that, he's done so well. Perhaps it was a, you know, it was a way of him telling us that he needed more time because he's done nothing but grow. He'd almost look like a chaser now. So, But I think we'll, we'll, we'll keep him to hurdle, give him more experience, let him strengthen up for another year before getting a novice chasing. And hopefully, you know, hopefully the dream would be that, you know, he'd be able to maybe compete in something like a Potemps at the end of the season. Shalimar's a horse you've always seemed to have a yeah, high regard Yeah, exactly. For, but... We had nothing but niggles last season, which was frustrating. No, like, real, real big issues, but just niggly, niggly issues. And he only had the one run at Market Razor, which didn't go so well. Uh, um, trainer area, we, we sort of ends up running him over a bit far. He picked up a splint. He's had a good break. He's strengthened up even more. He's always been built for jumping fences. We bought him to go chasing, so uh, you know, off 100. I think it's 126. Look, he, he no his handicap chases in the in the in, in October um, is where he'll start, probably over a sort of two mile three. Um, I think he'll end up being th three mile chaser in time, but um, sort of two and a half is what we're thinking this season. Uh, but look, hopefully he can he can improve for going over fences and give us a bit of fun. We've seen the best of him. Yeah. No, definitely not. I mean, he, you know, at the end of the day, he 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 his jumping is a big asset to him, um, and you know, I, I, he likes he he's a, he likes to kind of dominate a field. You know, he he has he's he has that kind of um, you know character to him. Uh, so, you know, the sort of smaller field novice chases when he gets into his jumping and if he's as good a jumper as he is a hurdler, you know, if he's a better cha uh, jumper of a fence than he is a hurdler, then, you know, we should have some fun with him, for sure. And a few of the youngsters that you, we should be keeping it. Yeah, it's absolutely. Right. Like, obviously, there's, um, you know, there's, there's quite a few there. So, Rouge Viv, he won his bumper very well at Ludlow, if you remember. Um, he, was, he was good that day. And, uh, you know, another horse is um, uh, Young Bull, come out of the Irish point to point scene. He's a nice horse. Um, he's only just a four-year-old, and um, and a horse called uh, Genius, who won who won a bumper at Southall uh, in May, first time out. He, you know, he's he's a very likable sort. We're going to run him in the bumper under a penalty, and uh, you know, if he wins that, actually, we might think about um, you know a listed or a black type bumper later in the season. Um, you know, obviously, if if, if he's if otherwise. If, if he perhaps gets beat under a penalty, then we'll kick on hurdling. But you know, with this sort of speedy type family, and, and it's a bit of flatbed bread, you know, in there that we'll just see what see what he can do in bumpers and go from there. Really, Harry, give the Racing Post TV viewers a horse to follow for the um, for the season. Ooh, let me think about this. Um, we're going to go with a horse called Cage. He's a lovely stowaway horse, five-year-old. Uh, he, he finished third in a, in a good bumper at Chepstow a year ago. Um, he then ran in, in Sandown in a second bumper. Uh, he's, he's, he looks a fabulous animal. He's done, he's done really well over the last few months. He's, he's grown and strengthened up and he looks a quality horse. He's got lots of natural pace. Um, he, he, he looks a runner and uh, he's going to go novice hurdling in, in, in October. Um, but he's, he's, he's a quality animal and I think he, he could just be a bit of a dark horse and one to follow for sure.